it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Luan Cox, as, uh, as we said, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Crowdnetic. Uh, and before I sort of get into the crowd finance ecosystem and, and what, how we sort of define uh, crowd finance, to talk a little bit about my background, also my co-founder's background, and sort of how we wound up uh, in this space. Um, I, I personally have 15 plus years uh, of experience in the financial data and web solutions business. In fact, I started my career in uh, Mountain View, California, helping to build a company called Quote.com. Um, for those of you who are over 40 might remember, we were uh, the first ones to bring stock quotes onto the internet. We were Sequoia backed, Mike Morris was on our board, um, and people thought we were absolutely insane. Because no way could normal people understand a stock quote on their own, which sounds sort of familiar now, because how in the world could anyone understand private equity on their own? Um, and we just sort of got crazier and crazier. We bought stock quotes on the web, we bought research, news, um, and then companies like Schwab, E-Trade, Fidelity uh, called us, and as, as they were sort of pioneering, as you know, the, the self-directed online investing world, and said, you know, we don't want to aggregate all this data, we don't want to build the front-end applications, can we just private label yours? And so we sort of invented cloud-based financial applications back in the 90s before the word cloud was really being used. So I've built four successful businesses since then in the managed solutions data, data space. Um, and uh, three years ago, noticed a, a website called Kickstarter. I live in Brooklyn. And, uh, and three years ago, people barely knew who Kickstarter was, and, and I saw it. We did, I just left Interactive Data, which is the third largest data provider in the world, and grabbed my head of technology there and said, you know, this crowdfunding stuff is really cool. Let's take all of our technology experience and build a crowdfunding platform, launch a bunch of niche sites, and tie it to charity. And that was the first sort of um, uh, premise for Crowdnetic pre-Jobs Act. And when the Jobs Act started to bubble up, I co-founded an organization called CIFRA, which is a lobbyist organization, and started meeting with the SEC and FINRA, and a light bulb went off for me, um, which was, you know, this is going to be a data nightmare. Um, another, another sort of light bulb went off as well, which is the problem of what we call deal flow versus distribution. Um, so data nightmare, how are investors going to be able to research, analyze, compare across all these portals? This is a new asset class has just been born. Uh, and then deal flow versus distribution, how are these portals going to attract attract quality issuers, and then also a repeat loyal investor base. And that's hard, it's called financial media, it's called retail brokerage. So we pivoted the company 18 months ago and, and went back to our roots and set out to build the only real-time market data platform for the crowd finance industry. Uh, and, and we define it, by the way, as, as peer lending, peer lending, which we'll talk a little bit about, and uh, obviously equity. Um, we made history on October 11th with a partnership with Dow Jones, where, as you know, Title II was implemented on September 23rd of last year. Three weeks later, on DowJonesMarketWatch.com, we launched the first ever private company ticker plant, if you will, uh, and quote feed on onto um, the investing and marketing and, and markets pages of, of, of MarketWatch, where seven and a half million people, for the first time, are seeing every day uh, private company offerings, 506C offerings. Uh, side by side stocks, bonds, ETFs. Um, we operate the largest educational resource in our acquisition of Now Street Wire last year. And we're also considered to be thought leaders uh, in the events space. And our approach to events uh, is much different than uh, crowdfunding events that you might, you might see. Ours, because of our background with Wall Street, with data, is really trying to bring in uh, mainstream Wall Street into the fold and educate them. Um, we held our first crowd finance 2013 event in partnership with Thomson Reuters, uh, who was a close partner of Crowdnetic. Um, back in December, uh, had over 200 people there, um, hol holding, holding uh, the second one on October 23rd. And I just got back from San Francisco. We own, we own part of LendIt, which is the largest peer lending conference uh, producer in the world. And uh, just got back from San Francisco last night. This, this year's event was held on Monday and Tuesday of this week. We had almost 1,000 people. Um, at the event, which is three times what it was last year in New York. Um, and then uh, on Monday, uh, we, we just launched uh, our, our kayak for the peer lending space called Lendius. So enough about me and Crowdnetic, but I, I hope you think we're qualified to, to talk to you, uh, or I'm qualified at least. So um, you know, we'll just go down to basics. You know, what, what, is crowd, what is crowd finance? And again, I, I, I mentioned, we, we define it both in terms of stocks, equities, um, and peer lending slash fixed income. And, and you know, as a data and technology person, uh, that, that's how we have to come about it because um, not, not viewing it together um, is, uh, is wrong because it is. It's, it's crowd lending and it's crowd, it's crowd equity. 
Um, and simply, it's and not, not that I know, I know the room, the demographic of the room understands it, but it's really just, you know, anytime you're going to give something financial in return, it goes into the crowd finance world um, and becomes regulated as well. Um, I guess, it, how, how many, I'm not going to spend much time on Jobs Act, but just a show of hands, I mean, how many people are sort of um, pretty, pretty up to speed on, the, on Title II and tw Title III of the Jobs Act, which is really what's just most concerning in the crowd finance space? Ah, interesting, okay. Um, all right, so in crowd finance, and you could argue that Title IV, Reg A+, plus, which we were not gonna talk about today, could, could get into the crowdfunding space, but for today we're gonna talk about Title II and Title III, because um, that's most germane to, to our space. So Title II was implemented on September 23rd of last year by the SEC, and for us in the crowd finance industry, uh, was a huge regulatory milestone, even if they screw up Title III, which we can debate later over drinks. Um, Title II was significant because it removed the general solicitation ban on private capital raising. Um, so overnight, on September 23rd, without even having to notify the SEC, which many did, by the way, but you didn't have to, you could start advertising your private capital raise uh, on Facebook. Um, and that's why we were ready for it. We knew September 23rd was out there. We reached out to a big partner. We, we reached out to AngelList, CrowdFunder, EquityNet. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be bringing on Rock the Post soon. So all of the large, uh, finance or, or, or intermediaries in the crowd finance space um, are publishing to our platform, by the way. Um, we're not scraping data. And, and the idea is to be able to uh, get that data out to the world, and we, we hope to be a conduit around that. So Title II was implemented. There are 3,000 plus companies on our platform and, and that we're aware of uh, outside of funds who are raising capital right now under Title II, or trying to, at least. Um, why is it a big regulatory milestone? Because there are eight million accredited investors in the United States. Um, most, most who don't even know uh, that they're accredited because you only have to make $200,000 a year. I say only, we live in New York. Um, but yeah, eight, eight million people could actually invest in, in, in private companies and only 300,000 did last year. So what does that tell you? That they either didn't know they were accredited um, or no one came to them with, an, with the idea to invest in the next Facebook. And that's why Title II is, is significant. Obviously, Title III is, is much bigger. Um, and under much debate, we're already hearing about Jobs Act 2.0. Regulators are already saying, whoops, we screwed up. It's not practical. Um, we'll, we'll work through that together. But it's critical that we do. And we know that it will, we will get there. Um, and when we do, this will allow, Title III allows everyone to invest up to certain amounts each year. Right? So under Title II, you can advertise to the whole world. You can only take money from accredited investors. Title III, um, you can take money from everyone, and there's some, there's some things in there that will actually allow you to, to advertise. <laughs> Implications. I mean, clearly, um, from an investor and entrepreneur perspective, it's, it's a win-win. It's positive. Um, you know, entrepreneurs, smart startups are, are starved for capital. This is, if, if this is a quick, I say quick, a, a quick relative to, uh, to, to regular means way of getting their raise out to the world. Um, and then obviously for investors who've been shut out from these opportunities for 80 years, um, it, it, it represents, a, and who are obviously not very happy right now with the public markets, um, represents an alternative asset class. And we think that over time, um, the, private, the private markets and even secondary trading in the private markets will actually surpass public um, because if we can, if we can set up the infrastructure properly, um, we won't have maybe the high frequency trading issues that we have today, and that's another debate we can we can have later. Um, but it is, you know, the uh, securities industry, uh, <laughs> which means there's a lot of participants, and obviously much more uh, complex than uh, than rewards based crowdfunding. Uh, but we still think it's a win-win, and when we think of the ecosystem, we just don't think of more lawyers getting paid or more accountants getting paid. Um, we, we think of new businesses being born and, and, and old businesses like accounting and, and legal being scaled um, for the masses. So if we look sort of on the, the, the top left quadrant of the, uh, of the spider chart, um, this really represents you know, the expansion of existing financial services and legal services and accounting services due to um, the birth of, and this is not just obviously in the US, this is a global phenomenon as we know, uh, of the birth of crowd finance. Um, Obviously, more banking services, more accounting services, uh, un unfortunately, and no offense lawyers, more, more legal services. 
um, due diligence, and then, and then secondary markets, which I'll talk again about on, uh, in a minute. But, but, the, but, but it's important that we, that we are proponents of secondary markets for, for no other reason for the entrepreneur's sake uh, and the investor's sake. Because clearly if an entrepreneur who's raising capital um, can also point to um, a real, possibly you know, fairly liquid secondary market, then the investment risk from the investor may not be as, as bad. So we are really, and, and we're, we're, we're two years off from a, from, a, from a secondary market that has, I think, any, um, any real volume, um, but it's important that it exists. And then on the right side, um, crowdfunding portals, crowd finance portals, broker dealers. And uh, you know, I, I mentioned the challenges earlier. And, and these challenges represent opportunities, by the way, and represent births of new businesses. But portals, broker dealers, are, you know, ch challenged with um, deal flow. Um, and there's all kinds of creative ways to bring that deal flow uh, in that, that people are coming up with. And then investor flow. And when we look at the market, and we, we know all of the portals that are out there, the ones that um, tend to do the best, and we, we know them, and I have a slide on some with some of their names, are the ones that already have sort of an existing um, network that allows for a, pro, uh, you know, a curated um, set of deals uh, that comes in highly curated, and more importantly, an investor network that trusts that company. Um, other sort of services that, that are, are, are coming about that, that need to be uh, expanded for this space, due diligence, um, security, uh, obviously companies like Bankbox, uh, security and escrow, companies like Bankbox creating uh, um, ways to move money. Um, matching services, uh, you, know, you, know, you, don't, you haven't think about it, but yeah, there's matching services in terms of uh, investor to entrepreneur, but portals are, are really challenged with differentiating themselves. So a lot of them are doing things like you know, helping, helping find uh, uh, em employees um, for these, starting, you know, these startups or, or, or offering advisory um, services for the company's post-funding. Post um, and then uh, secondary markets, again. And uh, the secondary market, just to sort of take a step back on the peer lending side, secondary market on the peer lending side um, is probably not too far away. Um, that industry is seven years old. It's already taken its hits from the SEC. And, and we think that the equity side of our world will just sort of follow uh, peer lending. And it's ho hopefully not on the SEC side. Uh, the, we'll, we'll skip that part, but, uh, but in terms of its growth. Um, and then the, the sort of bottom half of, of the site is really sort of greenfield uh, in terms of what's possible in, in the, in the birth, because of the birth of this space. Um, if we look at it from a global perspective, we know that there's a lot of activity in Asia, in Europe, um, in trying to solve a problem, uh, in, so in terms of trying to solve problems about cross-border investing and helping each other. You know, crowd fi finance in Europe can't exist if, if France doesn't help Spain. You think that'll ever happen? Um, but it's gotta happen, you know? Um, so, so we're also helping, helping there to the extent we can um, with the trade associations. But you know, we'll see also um, consolidation uh, in this space. I mean, there's a, you know, depending on who you ask, you know, there's, there's 400 to 1,000 portals globally. Um, maybe this many are, are actually really viable. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see some consolidation. And then um, we're already seeing it now, angel, angel investor networks. Uh, coming on board because uh, they 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 don't, they're not set up to sort of handle the incoming deal flow, and uh, and if you go back you know if we go back to my uh, my experience in the 90s and, and the world of online or uh, you know online investing, that's where we are now. Every just things that are doing be done, be, that have been done offline are being done online, and in the case of the angel investor world, which is not efficient in terms of how they handle internal in, incoming deal flow. They've thought about ways and, and come to uh, companies like ours to figure out how can we, how can we manage more incoming and automate and, and distribute. Um, and then on the right side uh, of the slide, all of the um, new businesses that you could imagine um, that could pop up uh, in the future. And you know, for example, I mean, we, we wouldn't have Uber if there wasn't Facebook, right? And look at all of the social media businesses that have, that have come out of Facebook. This is, this is I, think, I think we're on the, we're on the, the we're at the sort of the beginning of, of huge expansion in terms of types of businesses uh, that, are, that are probable um, around investor relations. Um, you know, the, the, I don't know if there's any investor relations people in the room. Is there anyone? One? See? <laughs> the investor relations um, industry 
has no idea um, what's about to hit them. And, uh, and, and that, that's actually a quote from the, the CEO and head of the National Investors Relations Institute. Um, they have no idea. They're not paying attention. But they will. And uh, we'll have more scaled investor relations. It'll look much different. Um, and uh, you know, it would be interesting to see. On the entertainment side, we're already seeing it. A&E doing stuff on crowdfunding. I think CNBC had a, had a sort of crowdfunding shark tank. You know, there's crowdfund TV. So, so the entertainment industry could, could change um, towards helping to either educate people are investing in private companies or, or capital raises. Um, transparency and trust tools. Now, you know, again, we're taking something that's very um, hard for people to understand because we ha still have an education um, uh, ramp to get to. Um, <laughs> You're investing in, at least when you invest in a public company, there's a lot of public information and, and uh, we're, we're trying to help with providing more. But at the end of the day, and, and as an investor and, a, and, a, and an entrepreneur who's raised capital, people invest in people, right? <coughs> so there's a lot of interesting companies popping up around trying to create trust tools, um, reputational type tools, um, so that you're investing, you know, to follow along how people's minds work anyway, anyway when they're investing in, in a small company. Um, big data, uh, overused term, but data aggregation, tra transparency, our, our business was born out of that. Um, and then, you know, uh, new, new cases obviously for the social web and how we, how we, even, how we leverage existing networks like Facebook and, and, uh, and Twitter and, uh, and LinkedIn to help raise capital for small businesses. Um, and then, uh, you know, co-working, inc inc you know, incubators, which we, we see a lot of them now, but we think that, um, you know, the whole crowd mentality is, is, is about um, community and, and crowd. And uh, you, you st when you start to sort of think about uh, each other as, uh, and, and you know about all the companies that are, uh, you know, trying to raise capital or, or hire or whatever, we're, we're starting to, there's no reason why there should be an empty seat at, at offices. And so I think we'll see a lot, of, a lot more. I mean, we've even talked about doing sort of, um, you know, co-working spaces just for crowdfunded companies. Um, and then education and campaigns, and this is not just for the investor, but really for the entrepreneur. There, there are companies that are popping up that, that are just going to help you create your video, um, get your pitch together, and you can see how obviously this will go into the mainstream and, and PR and marketing um, companies will, 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 will hop on board. So uh, you know, in this, if we had more time, we could, we could debate and discuss this for hours. So it's really, really, really exciting that it's not just for the investors and entrepreneurs. This is a, this is a revolutionary time for the entire sort of crowd finance uh, or, crowd or this financial services industry. But we can't really sort of talk about the ecosystem without talking a little bit about how we see the, 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 the life cycle and how this whole uh, evolution, revolution changes the potential lifestyle, life cycle of a company um, that's never been able or never been possible before. So what's not on this slide is uh, obviously a company would start to um, uh, get validation for their product on an Indiegogo, Rocket Hub, Kickstarter, right? Um, and then what? So then they come into our world. And so you can imagine possibly, you can imagine uh, a company getting validation from Kickstarter uh, maybe coming into um, the peer-to-peer -peer space, maybe they still have a job or they actually have some revenues coming in because of that pre the pre-sales of the product and, and going into the peer-to-peer -peer space and getting a, a small personal loan from a lending club for right now up to $35,000 as long as you have a FICO of 640. Um, and then, and then coming back over, and that, you know, there's your $35,000. That's a lot of companies actually consider that seed capital, right? And lending club, FICO 640 is actually um, stringent, uh, you know, is, is actually very conservative as to who they loan to. There's a lot of other peer lending uh, companies that will take other things into consideration. So there is money available, and you don't have to go and try to get it from friends and family um, at that stage. Um, and then from there, coming over to the to the equity side, you have your product validation. You got you got you know a small loan to 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 get uh, yourself out of that job, and now you can go and actually raise capital. Um, and you're going to be in a better position to to actually get that capital because of the validation and the fact that you've quit your job and you're full time and, and dedicated. And then you then you call your friends and family also and and get in here. Um, and then and then as you are uh, operating um, and maybe have a little bit more revenues. Maybe you come back into 
the peer side, over to the peer to business world. So that's going to look at um, not only you, but the, your, your revenues and loan you money um, to, to grow or, or, or just to simply operate. Um, and then if you don't live in New York or San Francisco or LA, or y you could actually go back into a, 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 to a real estate crowd finance site and maybe buy, a, buy an office <laughs> and uh, have a, 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 an incubator or a, a co-work space in there. So you see how it all works together. And guess what's missing on this slide? Bank of America. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Sequoia Capital, um, Sand Hill Road didn't come out of my mouth till just now. Well, good, I'm done. And uh, so um, I, I'm, I'm honored. I mean, I, I clearly I've drank the Kool Aid. I've, I've staked my entire life on it, and um, uh, we are, you know, we just got to make this work. I'm honored to be a part of this industry. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see all of you guys. And uh, if anyone wants to, uh, to, to get involved and, and, and help, then, um, you know, come see me and I'll give you my card. So thank you. <laughs>